Exodus 20. Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, or any likeness of what is in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, Yahweh your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh your God in vain, for Yahweh will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yahweh your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male or your female slave, or your cattle or your sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which Yahweh your God gives you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male slave, or his female slave, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And all the people perceived the thunder and the lightning flashes and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And the people perceived it, and they shook and stood at a distance. Then they said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen. But let not God speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him may be with you, so that you may not sin. So the people stood at a distance, but Moses came near the dense gloom where God was. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, You yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. You shall not make other gods besides me, gods of silver or gods of gold. You shall not make for yourselves. You shall make an altar of earth for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen, in every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. And if you make an altar of stone for me, you shall not build it of cut stones. For if you wield your tool on it, you will profane it. And you shall not go up by steps to my altar, so that your nakedness will not be exposed on it. Luke 23 Then their whole assembly rose up and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation, and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. So Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, You yourself say it. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they kept on insisting, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching all over Judea, starting from Galilee even as far as this place. Now when Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was in Jerusalem in those days. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he rejoiced greatly, for he had wanted to see him for a long time, because he had been hearing about him and was hoping to see some sign performed by him. And he questioned him at some length, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and the scribes were standing there, vehemently accusing him. And Herod with his soldiers, after treating him with contempt and mocking him, dressed him in a bright robe and sent him back to Pilate. Now Herod and Pilate became friends with one another that very day, for before they had been enemies with each other. And Pilate summoned the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me as one who incites the people to rebellion, and behold, Having examined him before you, I have found in this man no guilt of what you are accusing him. No, nor has Herod, for he sent him back to us. And behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. Now he was obliged to release to them at the feast one prisoner. 
But they cried out all together, saying, Away with this man, and release for us Barabbas. He had been thrown into prison for an insurrection made in the city, and for murder. But Pilate again addressed them, wanting to release Jesus. But they kept on calling out, saying, Crucify, crucify him. And he said to them a third time, Why, what evil has this man done? I have found in him no guilt worthy of death. Therefore I will punish him and release him. But they were insistent, with loud voices asking that he be crucified, and their voices were prevailing. And Pilate pronounced sentence that their demand be granted. And he released the man they were asking for who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And when they led him away, they took hold of a man, Simon of Cyrene, coming in from the country, and placed on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. And following him was a large multitude of the people, and of women who were mourning and lamenting him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop crying for me, but cry for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others also, who were criminals, were being led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. And the people stood by, looking on. And even the rulers were scoffing at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Now there was also an inscription above him, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals hanging there was blaspheming him, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, and rebuking him, said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. And it was now about the sixth hour, and darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour, because the sun was obscured, and the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had happened, he began praising God, saying, Certainly this man was righteous. And all the crowds who came together for this spectacle, when they observed what had happened, were returning, beating their chests. And all his acquaintances and the women who accompanied him from Galilee were standing at a distance, watching these things. And behold, a man named Joseph, who was a council member, a good and righteous man, he had not consented to their counsel and action, a man from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was waiting for the kingdom of God, this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a tomb cut into the rock where no one had ever lain. It was preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin. Now the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and beheld the tomb and how his body was laid. Then after they returned, they prepared spices and perfumes. And on the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Job 38. Then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now gird up your loins like a man, and I will ask you, and you make me know. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you know understanding, who set its measurements, since you know, or who stretched the line on it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? 
or who enclosed the sea with doors, when, bursting forth, it went out from the womb, when I made a cloud its garment, and dense gloom its swaddling band, and I placed boundaries on it, and set a bolt and doors. And I said, Thus far you shall come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves stop. Have you ever in your life commanded the morning, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might seize the ends of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and they stand forth like clothing. From the wicked their light is withheld, and the arm raised high is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you carefully considered the expanse of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Where is the way to where the light dwells? In darkness, where is its place, that you may take it to its territory, and that you may discern the paths to its home? You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow? Or have you seen the storehouses of the hail, which I have reserved for the time of distress, for the day of war and battle? Where is the way that the light is divided, or the east wind scattered on the earth? Who has cleft a conduit for the flood, or a way for the thunderbolt, to bring rain on a land without people, on a desert without a man in it, to satisfy the waste and desolate land, and to make the growth of grass to sprout? Has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb has come the ice? In the frost of heaven, who has given it its birth? Water becomes hard like stone, and the surface of the deep is interlocked. Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades, or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth a constellation in its season, and guide the bear with her satellites? Do you know the statutes of the heavens, or fix their rule over the earth? Can you raise your voice up to the clouds, so that an abundance of water will cover you? Can you send forth lightnings that they may go, and say to you, Here we are? Who has given wisdom in the innermost being, or given understanding to the mind? Who can count the clouds by wisdom, or tip the water jars of the heavens, when the dust hardens into a mass, and the clods stick together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion, or fulfill the appetite of the young lions, when they crouch in their dens and lie in wait in their lair? Who prepares for the raven its provision, when its young cry for help to God, and wander about without food? Second Corinthians 8 now, brothers, we make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the churches of Macedonia, that in a great testing by affliction their abundance of joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the richness of their generosity. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord, begging us with much urging for the grace of sharing in the ministry to the saints. And this, not as we had expected, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. So we encouraged Titus that as he had previously made a beginning, so he would also complete in you this gracious work as well. But just as you abound in everything, in faith and word and knowledge, and in all earnestness and in the love we inspired in you, see that you abound in this gracious work also. I am not speaking this as a command but as proving through the earnestness of others the sincerity of your love also. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though being rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And I give my opinion in this matter, for this is profitable for you, who were the first to begin a year ago and not only to do this, but also to desire to do it, but now complete doing it also, so that just as there was a readiness to desire in it, so there may be also the completion of it from what you have. For if the readiness is present, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. For this is not for the relief of others and for your affliction, but by way of equality, at this present time your abundance being a supply for their need, so that their abundance also may become a supply for your need, that there may be equality. As it is written, He who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God who puts the same earnestness on your behalf in the heart of Titus. 
for he not only accepted our plea, but being himself very earnest, he has gone out to you of his own accord. And we have sent along with him the brother whose praise in the things of the gospel is throughout all the churches. And not only this, but he has also been appointed by the churches to travel with us in this gracious work that is being ministered by us for the glory of the Lord himself, and to show our readiness, taking precaution lest any one discredits us in our ministering of this generous gift. For we respect what is good, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have often tested and found earnest in many things, but now even more earnest because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker among you. As for our brothers, they are messengers of the churches, a glory to Christ. Therefore, openly before the churches, show them the proof of your love and of our reason for boasting about you.